Hey guys, have you ever wanted to make a crystal report for a report that didn't have a crystal report? While some of the documents or reports in SAP don't have crystal reports by default, but most of them you can make a crystal report for. So let's jump in. I first want to mention that this is not for the financial reports, guys. I know you're getting really excited. It's just not for that. I'm sorry, they're very complicated. There's no easy way to recreate them. Um, this doesn't cover that. It covers other things, but it's still really useful and you can use it for a variety of applications. So first I wanted to show you how I figured this out. Open up your sales order. Click your pencil here. I'm gonna look for the system one. Uh, this one here, uh, system crystal. This one does have one, don't get me wrong. I'm just gonna show you something. Click edit, just wait while SAP brings out the layout. So this is just your complete default layout. But what I noticed was these tokens. So doc entry, sorry, doc key at and object ID at, okay? So right click, uh, edit. <clears throat> so you can see it's a number. So when you work with a Crystal Reports layout, this is just the default sales order one, I knew that these tokens would actually be passing special information from SAP to these layouts. Close this. So one of the first examples is a service call. So service call, I'll just go to this example one I created here. So if you look by default, you have this layout designer, service call form, you don't have a crystal report in here. And you think, well, geez, how am I going to make a report for this if I do want to print something out for technicians or as a, as a record or a pick sheet or something? Well, what you can do is use that exact same reference and build your own crystal report. So I've already built something with the service call and I'll show you the layout and I'll show you how you can build it. Okay, here's my service call crystal report. You can see here, I'll remove my head from the side, parameters, dot, key, at, edit, and it's a number. I just named it the exact same way into the same data type. The key to this is SAP will just pass the primary key of the table into that token and you can use that parameter when you're generating a layout. So what we can do is go back to SAP, turn on our view system information, hold our mouse over a field and we can see that the main field is OSCL. So that's the service call main table. So you do your database, database expert, you would add your OSCL and that's the the most basic way to do it. You go to report, selection formula, record, and then you just say, you don't have to have all these tables, I'll explain what they are for in a second. OSCL call ID. So the call ID I know is the primary key. So I just say OSCL.callID equals doc key. And that's all you need to do for this really. So everything else I've built here is just extended tables and things that you can use to add more fields that are from this actual form. So you can see here all these different fields. Some of them do have sub tables. So the way I can do that very quickly is to go tools, queries, query generator, OSCL, and any of these ones that are high uh, are bold you can um, pull those over. So let's see, call status, open. Well, you can just click status, left click, drag over to the side here, tells you what the table is, tells you what the join is, and then it'll tell you what the fields are there. Then you could just basically go into Crystal Reports, database, database expert. Uh, let's just do this one. And this isn't the one I want here finish, and then you can go and add that particular table. So OSCS, so you can just type OSCS if you don't wanna look down. You can add it by using this into the list, and then you can go and link OSCS in the links there from, what was that one, status, status. 
to OSCS, okay? Really pretty easy. And then you can use OSCS in the report. OSCS right here. And then you just drag the name into the report. So I already have the name in there and I have everything else. I've done this already for you. I've added all of these extra fields. I've formatted all of this stuff. So you can literally take this service call layout. I'm gonna put a link in the description and you can just import this. Don't take my word for it. Let's actually import it now. So I called this service call V1.0, but you can see, well, I'm gonna say no. So again, to start, click the pencil, service call, I didn't do the technician form, click manage layout, click import. And a little trick here is you can see the layout ID SCL1. Another trick to get that too is go in this window and where it says service call, just click it and you can see SCL1. So that doesn't always give you the table, it's confusing. It will give you the document classification. So when you import it, you need to use SCL1. Import, next, browse, desktop, SCL1, layout, SCL1, okay? It's not OSCL, that would have been too easy. It's SCL1. So you can see when I name my file to make it easier for myself, I just call it SCL1 to remind uh, me that that's what I'm gonna do. So click finish, imports, close, okay, go back here, pencil, service call, okay, click here, set as default, set as default for all users, okay, update. Boom, click your print preview. Obviously we're not, we're not doing the technician form right now. And you could see all the information here, resolution, the dates and times, everything's kind of converted over there. So you're gonna have all this data right in your form. So I took the primary key with the doc key at, that's the magic to this whole thing and number parameter. And then what I did was just found the main table and I linked those together. And then I had to use secondary tables to figure these all out. If you don't care about these secondary tables, it doesn't matter. But you can do that with a lot of different documents. So the service call, the opportunity, and I'll show you just another one really quickly. I'm gonna use the payment wizard, which I did in another tutorial. So you can go check that out if you wanna know how to use this. I've had questions about the BP summary. So I'm gonna go whiz 2017, la la la, this one, and this is what I was using. Go to final step, so load, saved payment runs, view executed payment runs. Click the middle one or whatever and go next. So I'm at the last one. So I had the request to do the BP summary. So if you look in here, you can see that there are no crystal reports layouts, PLD, PLD. So I'm gonna click this button, this little drop down, PWZ8. Okay, so remember that this isn't the direct table that we are gonna look for, but it gives me an idea of the primary table and the secondary table. So the, the link to it is probably the PWZ table. So I'm thinking OPWZ and then PWZ something. So go into your query window, query generator, tab, OPWZ. Okay, payment wizard. Okay, perfect, great. Double click, execute, and la, 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 la. does this look right? Yes, right, okay, so we have these numbers, these names that we were looking for. Okay, we got our first table, O, P, W, Z. Second, we need some information like this with the names of the vendors and 33,134, et cetera, et cetera. So let's try P, W, Z, eight, nothing. But P, W, Z, there's other ones. Payment Wizard Row 2. Double click it, mm, I, this isn't looking good here. Let's click it. So this is something else. This is probably the summary by payment type. We don't want that one. X, let's try three. Okay, we have a card name, vendor name. Okay, that's close. Okay, so these are all the individual documents with the vendors and stuff. I think this is pretty close. So let's jump in to my example layout now. You can see this simple layout what I did was the same thing, parameters, dot key at, and it's a numeric type. You just literally make a numeric type with this name. It is the token that you're gonna use, and that's just how SAP passes through. It just takes over that token and turns it into the number of the primary key. If you remember, 
uh, database database expert. Uh, we had OPWZ and PWZ3. So in order to get that, you have to just add a connection. If you don't know how to do this, take my course. Next, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Here, DBO tables, OPWZ. Then you just go next, PWZ3. There it is, next. Then you link them together from ID number to ID entry. And that's good enough for us right now. Push OK and close that. Report. Selection formula, record. So you can see OPWZ, usually it's the first one that's the primary key. It's pretty easy to figure that out. There's no doc entry or whatever in the first, so it's not like a regular document. So once you've set this, I already know that this payment amount needs to be greater than zero. It actually outputs all documents, but you only want ones that have greater than zero payment amounts because it just shows uh, all, the, all the data in there. So I just filtered by that. You would figure that out uh, pretty quickly. This will just save some time in this video. So I have that. I save that. I have this very, very basic uh, save. Close this. Back in SAP. Let's click the layout designer, manage report, import, and we can see PWZ8 or again, if you click here, PWZ8 is the type that we want to import. Import, next, browse, desktop, PWZ8. Remember I named the file like that, it just makes it easier. PWZ8, next, finish, close, okay. Close that because it doesn't update automatically. Right click. Okay, we have our BP summary and CR set as default, set as default for all. And preview, oh, numbers all match, blah, 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 number five. You don't have to output number five, but you can basically build any report you want based on this, and it can be whatever you want. Crystal Reports is a lot more flexible, so that makes it so much easier. So I'll include that layout as well. So many other layouts do that exact same thing. It'll allow you to make much nicer Crystal Reports for those document layouts. The last thing I wanted to talk about today is this how to work with SAP Crystal Reports and SAP Business One document. There's probably a new one, but this one's pretty darn good. I know that on page 19, we have the tokens, a further discussion of tokens. If you've worked with Crystal Reports before, you would know that um, the tokens don't work exactly the same as in the native runtime of Crystal Reports. So this gives you many more options on how to make your own prompts and parameters in Crystal Reports that will give you more options in uh, when you run the report. If this doesn't make sense to you, I have a Crystal Reports for SAP Business One course at battleshipcobra.com or crystal.battleshipcobra.com on Udemy. It's online self-paced and it'll go through all this stuff, all the tokens, all the document layouts, how to make your own reports, all that stuff starts from scratch and covers everything. I will include this PDF as well in the link below in the video description. My name is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra, and I do weekly SAP Business One videos on Mondays, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I usually make at least one video per week. Check out all my other videos. I have quite a few of them. Check out my courses, like I mentioned, go to battleshipcobra.com. I have a Crystal Reports for SAP Business One and an SQL for SAP Business One course as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, like it. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you're a super fan, click the notification bell to get emails whenever I make a report so you don't miss them. Thank you very much. Bye for now.